Chapter 1. If I'd known my clothes would have covered in blood by the end of the evening, I probably wouldn't have agonised over my wardrobe selection. But as I prepared for my first date since my divorce, my fashion choice seemed momentarily important. Sweaters, slacks and skirts were strewn across my bedroom, but I still couldn't decide what to wear. After negotiating my curves into spandex, tummy-controlled item, smaller than my fist, I gazed in dismay at the mess, my barely visible bed. Too short, too long, too boring, too sleazy. The bright red numbers on my digital clock glared at me. Less than five minutes to get my butt out of the bedroom and into my car. I zipped up my mid-calf black dress skirt, my black mid-calf black skirt, buttoned a long-sleeved white blouse and tucked into the waistband. The mirror above the dresser reflected its disapproval of my selections. Nothing looks right, I sighed. I neither look like Be- Betsy Baker <laughs> or Bimbo Barbie. Are you sure you want to go through with that? this? Jenna, my 16-year-old daughter, slouched against the door. You're kind of old to start dating again. Oh, since I was 39, considered over the hill, called in Cosmo, 39 was the new 29. My teenage critic flopped on my bed, turning the mountain cast-offs into a wrinkled puddle. I didn't find the Dr. Field to tell me that some passive-aggression behaviour was going on. I put my hands on my hips and glared at her. Look, what did... What... What you did to my clothes? Jenna slid off the bed... With a martyr's sigh, I disappeared for the doorway. Seconds later, a powder blue, blue costrier shutter sailed across the room and smacked the back of my head. Lone the sweater must have been must have been Jenna's way. Of agonizing, apologizing. Unfortunately, it was a gift from my father. Not time to ponder the psychological ramifications of wearing an item purchased by an ex husband for a first date in seventeen years. I slipped the sweater on the sweater. A sweater designed for a smaller frame than mine. Over my head and stared at my reflection. Between a tight sweater glued up on my chest, a long black skirt and my chunky five foot four frame, I invented an entirely new look. Bimbo Banker. I stepped into my new three inch heels. At least my shoes looked hot. The only reason I was in the middle of the clothing meltdown was that Liz, my best friend, had taught me to joining a dating service called a Love Club. A safe alternative to online dating. As far as I was concerned, there's no only one safe alternative. Not dating. I flew down the stairs and paused to peek in the family room. Red and gold strobes of light swelled over Penny, Jenny's open curls. Tucked in a chair, I put in, in my buzz in place. My daughter attempted to concentrate on a book, a joy of calculus, calculus. While her seven-year-old brother, Ben... His friend battled it out with the Jedi Knight laser swords. A grateful sized lump lodged in my throat as I gazed at my children, reevaluating my decision to start dating. Was I looking for a partner, a male role model for my son? If I met someone, would it harm the close relationship I had my daughter? Did I really want to find Mr. Wright? Oh, uh, oh, just Mr. Every other Saturday night. Meaningful questions. Meaningful questions. When, which I needed to ponder. When I was more than thirty seconds to pet spare, fifteen minutes later, I walked into Lando's the Tuscan famed restaurant in the end of the hill. An expensive rest, residential cave located thirty miles east of Cerro Sacramento. I lost a battle with a stubborn gas nozzle and reeked of gasoline. I darted in again. Ladies' room to wash the pungent smell my hands. After tracing lipstick over my non collagen enhanced lips, I peered in the mirror. Another one of those mysterious silver strands had appeared in my copper straight bob. I yanked out the Riley carpet, took a deep breath, and threw it op- op- open the door. A smell of garlic mixed with flowery perfumes greeted me as I click clacked across the terracotta. Towels to the reception desk. The woman milling round the lobby were all taller, slimmer, and better dressed than me. Any minute now, the old Dorado Hills fashion police would hand out a fashion criticization. 
Oh, my name is Laurel McKay. I, I said to size zero hostess, who barely larger than the menu she held. Do you know if Garrett Limstone has arrived? An arm straight around my wrist. No, sorry, I'm late. I squiggled away to get a better look at my date. This cl- guy's close chose me, Garrett. He's even better looking in person than one of his DVDs. Over six foot tall, dark brown hair, tiny wide rims, a Clark Kent lookalike, clad in a dark suit, in a black suit and slacks. How to slim as pass a three piece chess combo and to an intimate corner table. My heart pounded in rhythm with a bass player as I folded a white linen napkin on my lap. Garrett bore an amazing resonance, the intrepid journalist superhero. Thoughts of the two of us soaring over the city, skytrapers, filtered through my brain. Do you not like to fly? I asked, still hung on the Clark Kent likeness. Garrett looked surprised. Oh, yeah, I enjoy flying. My accounting practice keep me so busy, so I don't have trouble much. How about you? Taking any exotic vocations as recently? It took me all of three seconds to compliment exotic trips I've taken in my lifetime. Kids, I went to Disneyland two years ago. Garrett gave me a blank look. I mentally slapped myself. Nothing like mentioning Mickey Mouse on the first date to bring the conversation to a crashing halt. Our waiter appeared before I could embrace, embarrass myself further, my elaborate on joys of riding an oversized teacups. He leaned over and lit the small candle on a table. My name is Aaron. Can I tell you what about tonight's special? Garrett winked at me. I think my date is pretty special, but let's hear your, hear about yours. My cheeks feel flushed tomato soup red. It had been years since anyone paid me a compliment. My self-esteem, which had been non-existent since my ex-husband moved out, jumped up a notch. Once we placed our orders, a silence engulfed. A silence is never golden, my word. In in. I rushed to the field of gap with anything I remembered from my counting 101 class. Carrot, I'd love to learn about depreciation. I really need, I really need to find a dating for dummies guide. Ten minutes later, when our entries at trays arrived, he was still discussing depreciation methods. The slow the glow of meeting my superhero dissipated as Garrett moved into I, an IBA, incredibly boring accountant. When... When lined up for his dinner utensils to display the merits of straight line depreciation, I could see the writing on the spreadsheet. It wouldn't be no second date. I picked up my watch. If the second, if I skip, if we skip dessert, I can make it home and try to watch CSI. It crossed my mind. I might not be ready for dating. If I thought of viewing dead bodies on television, preferably to being out with a live male. I turned back to the. Hear Garrett say, if his structure is right, it's like getting free money. Free money? And my ears perked up at this, his statement, but my eyes were diverted by the butcher, mocha and cream confection placed between us. I could always make time for Temesu. Once the server cleared our plates and bought the bill, I ready the evening to end. Garrett insisted on pulling my chair back for me. I rose from the table. What nice manners. Hold on. Did his hand graze my right breast? No, I wish you were thinking. It must have been years before anyone gave my, any part of my hand out to me. The breast uh, night air, air felt ref- refreshing after the garlic and basil scents of the restaurant. As we walked through the parking lot, I poured through my purse. Lipstick, pepper spray, melted chewy bears, no keys, no phone. We approached any my car. I, lit, I appeared in the window. The keys dangled from the ignition. Right, next to the cell phone, hanging from the charger. Some mother I was. Dating was already proving too much of a distraction. Carrot, my keys are locked inside the car. And my phone is there, too. Can I use the cell to call AA? I shivered to a cold night, penetrated by my lightweight sweater. He pointed to a large stand, a few spaces away. It's getting cold. Why don't you make the call from my car? Good idea. I slid in a soft leather 
bench seat of his roomy beige Lincoln town car. My date is excellent taste in vehicles. Garrett slipped into the driver's seat and handed me a slim metal phone. I dialed AA. Gave the dispatch our location. I hung up and turned and said, Thunk. My head smacked the passionate side door as Garrett thrust himself on top of me. His cell phone fell out of his on my hand. My purse flew over the headrest and into the back seat, sending the purpose fate out of the reach. My right elbow smashed into the windscreen as I struggled to push him off. He grabbed both wrists in a right vice like grip and covered my face with, my, with wet, soppy kisses. A door handle pressed into my back as my superhero turns into Dr. Evil. Carrot finally relaxed his hold on my arms and shifted his adrenaline down the stream. Adrenaline surged from my body as anger replace fear. I'm grabbing the right thing I could find the first thing I can find, then raise my right arm. Crack Chapter two Blood spilled spurted as the phone connected with Robert's nose. The back of his head bounced off the driver's seat window as he roared out a string of obscenities. Although he's smashed no, for his smashed nose, it sounded more like puck and pitch than the most than the usual speeches. I yanked my purse from the back seat, jumped out of the car and slammed the door. As I raced back to the restaurant, I suddenly thanked Noka, Noka for designing such an effective weapon. My hostess looked startled as I rushed past her to the ladies' room, so I dampened the vapour tail, put it was useless and the blood splattered all over the was water. I dropped the towel in the garbage can and leaned against the sink, my hands trembling. Why had this Boring accountant changed into a sex crazed maniac. Maybe it should have ordered Tazamisu. Did something, did ordering dessert signify I was willing to beat dessert? His behaviour didn't seem normal. But it then come to dating, I was clueless. I was married by my high school sweetheart, and Garrett was the only second man I'd gone out with in my not 39 years. By the time we returned to the reception area, Garrett's car was gone, the bright yellow AA truck. As I leaned in the parking lot, in less than five minutes, they unlocked my car. I was in, on my way home. I stopped at red light, and then my storm was st- and then the storm broke. Tears rained down my face, my sweater embracing the passing blood stains. Between my blurred vision and my teeming chest, I was no trip to drive. I made a choo choo bit of light, legs wife light and pulled into a McDonald's, waiting in line behind eight cars. A shot of caffeine gave me time to pull myself together. Miss girl running down my tear church cheeks, trying to me into goth mum. By this time of night, the crew had probably seen it all. The kids were asleep when I arrived home, so I didn't need to explain my, my mortal red clutches adored my borrowed uh, sweater. I tossed, turned and tossed again all night, finally falling asleep before dawn. The sun blasted me awake, round eight. I tried tried my fluffy pink Chanel robe around my waist and padded down the stairs with my matching pink bunny slippers. Morning, boys, I mumbled up to Ben and Jimmy, sitting cross-legged in the carpet, playing a Nintendo game, pillage and burn. I could tell them. A thing or two about packaging. My slippers crunched through the trail of Cheerios, leading down to the family room into our sunny yellow kitchen. My rooster covered wallpaper cheered me up too, but this morning I wasn't in the mood to watch roosters strutting. It might be time to redecorate. After grinding a few extra tablespoons of fresh roasted beans, I hit the brew buttons on the coffee maker and grabbed the Sunday paper, the aroma of Kona coffee rafted through the kitchen as I checked out the vice columnists. No other, no other single woman, apparently, covered a date last night, so I wasn't going to receive any professional advice on that, any encounter, on my encounter. The shrill ring in the phone interrupted my reverie. I received a check ID, call ID, Liz. What took you so long? I rested a receiver against my ear as I poured the first drops of steaming coffee into my mug. Thought you might want to sleep in. A British accent was full throttle. She deep in her voice. In case you bonked your date. How did you find out I bonked him? You had 
sex of courage takes shape. The sex, oh yeah, I forgot the British definition of bonk. It was far different from bonk. I did not mean smacking a bait with a cell phone. Liz chuckled sympathetically as I recounted each agonizing detail of my counter. Well, love, maybe you were too darn irresistible. He couldn't control himself. Did you wear that luxurious lipstick I gave you last week? Liz owns a full ser- service bar, and she's dedicated to preserving her youth and mine with all natural products. You mean hottest, hotty red? Nope. I went for plain old pink. Wise move, otherwise he might have attacked you before dessert, she commiserated. I shall the next guy go out with would be big improvement. No, I'm done. This is my first and last date. I'm perfectly content to spend the rest of my life alone with my crosswords, a pound or two of chocolate to get through me through the kettle of puzzles in the Sunday New York Times. Laurel, you have to get back on that horse. Horse, the closest I've been to a horse recently it was a horse arse that attacked me last night. You know what I mean. You can't quit after one bad day. Don't forget, I ran out with some more than 50 feathers before I met my sweetie. Your wise f- close friend is always going to go back to the love club. Don't get one, don't let one rotten apple spoil the apple pie. My natural inclination was to bury my head in the sand, no better yet, in a book. But Liz did have a point. The agency needed to hear from Garrett's behaviour, but not to mention my bank account suffered a serious withdrawal when I signed up for a six-month membership. I didn't kill me to go out with one other guy. After agreeing to visit the agency over Ben Susco, after Ben Soccer game today, I hung up the, f- the phone. My daughter slid the studio back chair across from me over, over, over oversized grey sweats, coming out a slender and athletic five foot eight frame. Most sixteen year olds spend a day at the mall as if in excess of tan and fashion drooling over gawky, pimply guys. Not Jenna, my mass whiz daughter calculates statistics problems as a hobby. When she grows up she wants to be a national or professional poker player. So how was that da- your date? Her blue eyes looked anxious as she as she wound her album ponytail around her index finger. Was it the time to have that mother daughter chat about per- perfidity of men? Should I share my details about my oversex dinner companion? Some day, but not right now. He's not my type, I muttered. I stood and washed my mug in the sink, wishing I'd scrub away the memory of the previous evening. Maybe he should have wait a few years to date. She stared at her gnawed no, nail stubs. You know, like after Ben and I were out of the house. How about if I told on until you really resisted living? Then I'll m- meet some hottie in a wheelchair. We can roll into the sunset together. Jenna chuckled. Good one, Mum. I kissed the top of her head and walked into the family room. It's time to get the boys ready for their first soccer game in the season. Detach the jury from the Nintendo controls, ruffling Ben's hair and adding some more cowlicks to his shaggy chestnut mop. As they raced each other up the stairs, I noticed the crest of my boys' royal blue and red pants, Superman pyjamas. This is a reminder. I should stick to pint-sized Superman and forget about dressing finding a dressed-up version. When I dressed, I reminisced about my high school days. Every Friday night, I sat in the butchers, beaches, sporting my boyfriend, Hank, the star quarterback. Back then, cheerleaders in short, pleated short skirts constantly chased after him. When we married immediately after college, it never occurred to me that short skirted adult women would continue to chase after my husband. Decades later, that was the past history. Hank had moved on to a greener pastures, so it would so would I. Today my concentration focused on my son and a grassy green soccer field soccer field. I threw on turquoise sleeveless shirt, khaki shorts and a pair of matching turquoise jaw mules I found in the mall. Fifty cent off. The weather must be in the mid eighties. I could multitask and work on my tan while I watched the game. A second grade Teams playing at Pitlock Park, located four miles from our house, with an influx of so many new residents in the area. The league has forced to poll games on Sundays as well as Saturdays. Until a new field 
can be constructed. Thirty minutes later, I saw the sidelines of an emerald green rectangle trailing along with the other parents. My son has inherited my athletic genes, or lack therefor, was a huge disappointment to his jock father. Ben had spent the summer practicing his soccer skills by dribbling his soccer ball back and forth across the front lawn. All I could do was cross my fingers and hope for his success. A whisper of cloud temporarily blocked his su- the sun. A ref blew his whistle the second half kick-off. One of the forwards of Ben's teams kicked the ball backwards and it smacked into my son's foot. He stood in place, stunned undoubtedly from the shock, gaining possession of the ball. Even as ever supported mum, I screamed, Go, Ben! Whether it was at my yelling or the black or the pack of soccer players bearing down on him, Ben finally began dribbling the ball down the field. I see a blue and a gold hot on his rubber spiked shoes. One of the other team's players, a gold number two, abided on his royal blue shirt, tailed above my son. Suddenly number two's foot shot out and kicked Ben above his shin guard. My baby flew over and a white patch, white, black and white patch ball. When he landed, his body was still as my heart.